This is a Volvo XC60 Holestar. What's the difference between this and a normal XC60? Uh, quite a bit of horsepower and quite a bit of cash. This car is 94,000 euro in Ireland. 94 grand. But it's competing with the Audi SQ5, the BMW X3, a very well spec one. And I think I've fallen in love with it. But there are some things that aren't great. So let me explain in more detail. And hit subscribe to that channel if you haven't yet. Because Polestar is the performance division of Volvo, they've done something, well, quite unusual. Let me pop the bonnet and explain. So you see, they've put manually adjustable dampers right here and you can change them yourself but manually there are Olin's engineered by Polestar and you just twist them and you'll tweak the suspension setup but how often are you going to do that the wheels on this thing are absolutely huge they're 22 inch diamond cut alloy wheels sitting on very expensive Pirelli rubber and they're 265 wide which means loads of grip on corners. Um, the calipers are matching another part of the car on the inside, which I'll reveal in a second. And they're just huge. They're such a presence. And they're a thing that people stop you and ask you. They go, what's 22 inches? Yes, size clearly does matter on the Polestar. So the main difference between this and a lot of petrol performance SUVs is that this is actually a hybrid, so you can charge it and actually get an electric range out of it and save a few quid on your fuel bills. So in your boot, you'll get, nice isn't it? Cables, cables to charge. They've even given you one that'll go into a normal three pin socket and that's quite a bit slower. And obviously it works with fast charging, which by the way, is the only one that you'll pay for in Ireland currently. The 22 kilowatt public chargers are still free, although most of the time you'll have to pay for the parking. But that means you can get a range of 35 kilometers on charge out of this. And when you use that combined with the petrol engine, it achieves over 400 brake horsepower from a Volvo SUV. And if you're in the market for a home charger, make sure you go with a highly experienced installer, such as Dark at EV, who provided me with a Zappi charger for home. And to connect it up this end, you simply open your little charging port here. In you go, and you can be charging away and getting some fairly cheap power back into your car. So even though there's a whole lot of batteries going along underneath the boot here, which by the way doesn't have a spare wheel, it's got Foamy gunk and compressors, which is the way of the world, but I just don't know. How are we gonna be able to slag people who can't change a wheel anymore when nobody will know how to change a wheel? So you get a parcel shelf that comes out and your boot is really, really generous. There's tethering hooks, there's some chargers, there's uh, cargo nets, and the seats do obviously roll down into the back area, which gives you a huge amount of space. One part that has caught me out a few times though, so this parcel shelf will hold into place here and you can also rise it up to here. But sometimes when you're driving along and you hit a bump or anything like that and you've got a little bit of extra luggage in the back, this thing kind of pops up and as you're driving, will sit like that and restrict your view at the back of the car. Could be just this one, but it's happened. It's pretty handy to have that electric tailgate, although when you're spending all that money, you want a lot of stuff that you pay extra normally in the car to come as standard and that's one of them. A lot of you have been asking me to explain if there's room in a lot of cars I've been reviewing for two child seats and an adult, so hang on and I'll show you that in a second. But jumping on board, let's take a look at the back of the car. These doors could open a bit wider, so when you're getting out, that's as far as they go. If they went a little bit further out, it would make getting things and objects and babies in and out a bit easier but there is loads of leg room in the back now for middle passengers there is pretty big hump on the floor there's kind of like a, a plastic durable plastic uh, section that they put because little feet will be able to fit there but for adults you're gonna have to put your feet either side now that's still okay like you'll still feel reasonably comfortable but that kind of thing is sort of sticking into you know where and you'll no doubt feel more comfortable 
in this part of the car. All the stitching and the yellow seat belts, what do you think of them? Are they, are they okay or are they too bright? They do match the calipers on the wheels though. Uh, I like this. Cup holders, nice. Storage area here. We've got Isofix seats on either side and they've done what they've done in a lot of the Volvo range. Air vents, individual here for your rear passengers. Tons of height. Uh, also on the Polestar, you're gonna get a panoramic glass sunroof which floods light in and is impressive looking. There is no USB charger in the back. Again, for a family car, you'd kind of wonder why. Why not, that is. Uh, there is a 12 volt, so you can get adapters and stuff, but it'd just be easier if they, if they made them, I suppose. And there's cargo nets back here for keeping whatever. So it's very much a family car that goes like a rocket. For those of you who have been asking, can you get an adult in the middle on the back set of seats with child seats either side. Well, you can. Um, it's just not that comfortable. But, uh, you know, reaching around with it, seatbelt will be difficult. And then, try. Listen, if you're smaller than I am, potentially maybe female, because you might be smaller than I am, then yeah, you will. But, it's gonna be fairly snug, and I wouldn't want to do it on a five hour journey, but it's technically possible. It's just not very comfortable. That said, if you are considering this car from a rear legroom and child seat space point of view, there is enough room to have the driver's seat and passenger seat all the way back. There's still legroom for back passengers and you'll get the back of a child seat. It will just about touch it on the passenger seat all the way back, but if you just go back a couple of millimeters, uh, the rear facing seats will also work. And a lot of cars just can't make that happen, especially for longer front passengers who need extra leg room. Now, here's the fun part. So, so far it's really a car that is just like the XC60, apart from under the bonnet, so you can compare Pretty much this car if you're just thinking about a normal xc60 a lot of the stuff is going to feel and look the same and volvo do class interiors these vertical air vents are good it is a nice chunky steering wheel a little bit here popping out but not as much as you might get on a thicker audi steering wheel but the gear shifter very minimalistic and is nice you get this drive mode with a kind of a bit of a blingy looking jog wheel Loads of uh, stuff for stone glasses, phones, keys and stuff down here. Now under the armrest actually isn't that big. It's all right. And there's two USB charging points here. Uh, and nothing up front, but apart from uh, another 12 volt, but there's no further USBs. And there's areas for coins and stuff. Coinage man. So like a lot of current Volvos, a lot of the options are behind the screen. You're searching for everything from uh, the sat nav and connecting which media source you like all through there. There is a knob for the volume and there is a demister button here but there's also one behind the screen. Who would ever go looking for a demister on a touch screen? I, I don't know. And then your displays here are all nice and bright and white and pleasing on the eye so it's all good. These seats Stitching the attention to detail is lovely. Nappa leather on them. There's kind of winglets on the sides that support your legs and adjustable leg extenders. Both front seats have adjustable memory uh, settings on them. You can save two presets. You've got a Harman Kardon sound system, which has got plenty of punch in it. Even the glove box has got space. And it's just a very luxurious place to sit. I turned to my wife one of the days we were on a trip and I just said, wouldn't you love a car like this? And she just said, yeah, it's just pure luxury. And that is what it feels like. It's a lot of money, 94,000 euro. But you know, we can all dream, can we? The door bins are huge. I like the way they're separated so you can, you know, you can fit loads and loads of stuff in there. And visibility, the driving point of view is really good. Rear window is great, even though the pillars are chunky. There's uh, still plenty of visibility coming out of junctions and stuff like that. They've also got a little uh, parking ticket holder here. You may have seen that in Skoda. I'm not sure who invented it first, but anyway. And the headrests, 
You can feel that they're going to help you out in the event of an accident. Also because it's a Volvo. That's what they do, isn't it? It's got lots of stuff to keep you out of accidents, like frontal collision avoidance, cross traffic monitors. If you're reversing out of somewhere, it'll beep at you to say you're going to hit something if you keep on going. So all those safety devices you'll get on this car as standard, and they work very, very well. Now, there is no doubt that this car can shift, right? So you've got a combination of uh, your hybrid and your petrol engine, and that pushes out over 400 brake horsepower and buckets of torque. But then in just the petrol engine alone, which is powered by a two liter four cylinder engine, that's kicking out uh, over 300 brake horsepower. So even just with petrol, there's plenty of power in it. The drivetrain is complex. It's got four wheel drive capabilities. It's rear wheel drive, yet, You'll get a bit of torque there when you floor it. You'll feel the front wheels start to pull and you really have to hold on tight. So it's quite an unusual setup that a four wheel drive capable car would have the levels of torque there that it has. It's just weird. Now, you might find that exciting, but just to be aware of it. The suspension is also hard. So even with those adjustable dampers, and there's no doubt you can make it harder, again, if you want, it's, you know, for a car that is gonna carry people, you will get complaints, as I did, about how bumpy it was, particularly if you're sort of enjoying the power of the car. So it's a performance car. It's gonna be expected that it's not exactly gonna be like it's walking on clouds, but it is quite a harsh setup to bear in mind. Volvo are just a little bit famous for being very safe. So, let's test the brakes. Think it's fair to say your family would probably be very safe. Now, I'm just stuck in traffic here, so let me use it as an opportunity to explain to you the different ways you can drive this car. You've got a hybrid mode, which is really, really quiet and calm. And I'm actually in it now, and you can hear nothing, just the noise of the tires as you cruise along. The beauty of the XC60 Polestar is the 35 km pure electric range. With that range of 35 km, maybe you could get to work and charge it again, or maybe just your, your round trip isn't even over 35 km a day. Then you're getting a car that will do about 2 litres per 100 km even at about 80 kilometers an hour, which is quite impressive. Then you've got Polestar, so you turn that on, the dials get a bit more aggressive, and so does the engine. So the car really does shift then, it's always in a higher gear, ready to go, similar to a sports mode on an automatic gearbox. This has got an eight-speed automatic. And it really does pin you to the back of the seat when you need it to. So there's plenty of poke there. Then you floor it and you get this torque steer. You really have to grip onto that steering wheel to make sure you're staying in a straight line. It's quite a weird feeling. And then you can just pop it very quickly back into hybrid, everyday use mode. There is an individual setting that you can set up on the car as well. You might be able to tweak with different uh, gear changes, steering feedback, you can adjust the braking uh, and how dynamic it is. And you can tweak around with that as well. The car likes to be tweaked with. It's also quite an easy car to drive then when you aren't uh, looking to push on. It's really, really smooth, it's quiet. You don't actually hear it coming when it's coming up behind you and it's just a very luxurious feeling place to sit and be behind the wheel of. All the luxuries, all the toys are there, heated steering wheel, there's even three different levels of heat on the steering wheel so it doesn't get too hot. You've got blind spot. Everything you could kind of want for in a luxury car like this is there. Heads up display, you name it, the Polestar has got it. And it would want it for the price. That's probably one of the biggest drawbacks for some people. But if you're watching this and you've won the lotto, or you did really well, fair play to you. Uh, you know, 90, 94 Gs, maybe it's not a big deal at all. But make no mistake, this is a quick car and the hybrid options may make it just that little bit more affordable to run. The road tax is only 170 euro on a car that can do over 400 brake horsepower. You know, it's, it, <laughs> it's, it's just shouldn't be like that, but it is. And it really is a quick car when you want it to move. It's 
there is no slouch it's just that firm suspension setup you will feel every bump it's not a car that's going to waft you in comfort like a volvo traditionally would and if that's something that maybe makes it a deal breaker for you then just look at the normal xc60 because that's going to be a very capable car as well so thank you for subscribing to the channel if you have done so already if not why not give it the old thumbs up now like a video comment on one uh, there's links below in the video my patreon link that you can uh, help out if you want to support this fully independent one-man band channel everything editing everything is done by me uh, so if you'd like to help out there's ways that you can do it below and thank you very much for watching this pretty incredible car the volvo xc60 polestar see you very soon